This is where it all started in New York. My grandparents came by boat and landed in that island in about 1910. Here we are, over 100 years later. Me and Erin out here in New York City, baby, looking at the big time stuff. Because you know when the market goes bad, the big guys get hit first. And this one got hit hard. This hotel is not open right now. It has a court case pending in bankruptcy court. It's big money, but put up big money, you can make big money. The problem is unions, other people telling you how to run your business. Now, I believe in protecting workers, but when the unions get involved, they want to squeeze you. And that can destroy your business, unfortunately, especially in today's trying times. There's a lot of moving parts to this deal. You got union people you have to hire, you have to. Then, it's built on land that the city of New York owns. So you have to pay a lease to the city of New York. So you don't own the land, you gotta hire people that you're forced to hire. It's a mixed project where the up top floors are mostly condominiums that are selling for millions of dollars. It was a very high brand. What happened was the guys didn't operate it properly and they took away the brand and they put their own name on there, which could survive here in New York too. But we gotta really dig into the numbers because just owning this property, especially being closed, the carrying costs can be tremendous. You got taxes, lease payments, insurance. Now, if you get it open and you make enough money, it's all in the numbers, you gotta see. How much money can you project coming in and how much money you got going out? This property here, I believe at one time, was probably worth at least 200 million. Okay, they owed the bank 120 million. The bank's willing to take 60 right now just to get out of it. So it could be a really good deal. But this is a very intense operating property, okay? Heavy, heavy management. You're in New York City. You're over here near the Statue of Liberty. We're in the heart of Wall Street. You're gonna be on your top game to play in this field. This is big time stuff. Do we have the money to do it? Yeah, we could raise the money to do it, but is it gonna make us money? Because with today's interest rates and the high cost of operating in New York City, you could also lose your shirt. You got city tax, you got state tax, you got federal tax, you got the hotel tax you gotta charge and pay, you got sales tax, 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 tax. That's the problem with these states. But it's definitely an interesting opportunity. It's something I've never looked at before in my career, something in this type of location. You know, this is like being on the Las Vegas Strip but in New York City. I mean, all we'd have to do is move here. We'd have to move here only for about a year yeah. to get the place up and running and then flip it. There you, go. you could probably make about at least 50 million. We're going to Spark Steakhouse. We got, he took care of Castellano and made himself the godfather. He whacked them right after he had a big steak. I wonder, was it before he went to a restaurant or after? I think it was as soon as he got there, he didn't even get his last meal. Just imagine, they were driving down the same street, getting ready to go whack the Godfather. I'm good, thank you. The other day I was reading one of the letters you sent me They could have lessened your sentence But you made reckless decisions And so they kept you in prison All the lessons you give me during scheduled visits Help with manifesting my vision You blessed me with wisdom Wasn't interested in dealing I fronted runners and provided them with extra incentives Collected debt with their interest Ooh, look at that, beautiful flexed it, But instead I reinvested my business So what do you think? Beautiful. I think it's fabulous Yeah? Magnificent, thank you. After dinner, I might need a doctor. No matter how I try. But yeah, you want some steak? The only mackerel. He's got five bags of people say they took out of here. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> He's got a five hundred dollar meal in that bag. All right, 
you know I've been investing in Masterworks and I've been telling other people to invest in it. Well, we're gonna pay them a visit and see what's really going on over there and verify the inner workings of investing in art. Who designed that? You gotta take an escalator to get to the elevator. Look at this. We're about 100 yards in the World Trade Center with the Jersey City skyline in the background. Look at that view, baby. So let's see what Masterworks is all about. Because if you're gonna invest in something, do some homework. I gave him my money, now let's see where my money went. Oh my God, I didn't know it was this big. This whole thing is the marketing department? This is a big market. Ben, nice to meet you. Abner? Boy, there's a lot of people in one room. I couldn't work in a room like this. I get kicked out. And look, they got a nice kitchen here. Can I open the fridge? That's a fridge, baby. Look at that. These are the techies. You look like a techie. You look really smart. These guys here, they control the website and the app, okay? And make it nice and simple and easy for you to invest in fine art. How are you, how are you? Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What are we doing? We're hanging out, looking for some art. You got anything for sale? Here we have them. We've got the CEO of Masterworks, the head honcho, Scott Lynn. You might have seen him on CNBC. He's here running this whole operation. How much art do you really have here, Scott? So, I mean, the, the business in general, we have, a, we have over $800 million in art now that people have invested in through the platform. Here at Masterworks, we have three or four paintings that are, that are hanging now. Get back to work. <laughs> you, you gotta come more often. So this is our, our gallery within the office. We're, we're one of the largest collectors of an artist named Kusama. Um, she's one of the top artist markets that we track. I think we own probably more than a dozen Kusamas now, maybe more than a dozen and a half. But my guess is this is a two to three million dollar painting. Two to three million dollar painting. So, so this is a tarp by Keith Herring. He said, no, I think we bought this for two to three million dollars. I think it's appraised down around four million. Um, so the, the value of these has gone has gone way up over time. How much for this? I really want this in my house. <laughs> <laughs> this is a giant TV. Marilyn Monroe. That's Marilyn Monroe, Andy Warhol. Um, this is This is a real Andy Warhol, Marilyn Monroe? Really, real Andy Warhol, Marilyn Monroe. The first painting ever that was, was securitized really as, a, as an investment vehicle. I know that went up in value. Yeah, so we have over over 250 paintings, I think, that we've we've acquired and fractionalized now, and this is this is the very first one. Andy Warhol. That's big time. Right here, we have the acquisition department. These guys are the deal hunters. They look all over the world for the best deals in private art collections. So if you don't know much about art, you don't need to. We got this whole room full of people who that's all they do, they're experts. All this in the spreadsheets, uh, they have, I think it starts down there at like mm -hmm. the 70s or 60s, so that's mm -hmm. top, top right there. Yeah, we were the first people to do that basically. There are other databases and the auction houses have their own things, but if you're trying to get a market global view, you gotta start from scratch. So. Where do you store it all? Everything everything now is stored in Delaware. So we, we do that to avoid sales and use tax. And then we lend out paintings for relevant exhibitions. So we'll lend them out to, to major museums. And you have sold some, right? We, I think we've sold about 15 paintings now. I would say there's a couple of different things that really dictate whether we, we sell a painting. One is if we're still bought into the artist market or not, right? Some artist markets obviously slow down, I and mean, if things start slowing, then we'll start selling. Uh, the other is just opportunistically. If we get a really great offer on a painting that we think is above fair market value, then we, then we sell. You know, it's about timing. Timing is a lot to do with it. The economy can have a lot to do with it, but when things get tough in the economy, I know for a fact, People run the art. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, right now we're seeing a lot of interest in real assets generally. So things like art, gold, your real estate. But I think when we think about really the value that we're providing here, this asset class has been around for hundreds, hundreds of years, right? Literally centuries. I tell people that Sotheby's is 275 years old, one of the, the major auction houses. So you, you actually have a lot of data where art has been traded at public auction for decades. And if you look at the prices on what paintings have been selling for, they've been going up. The challenge for the average person is there's no way to invest in the asset class. So Masterworks is trying to solve that by making each of these paintings investable so anyone can participate. You don't just have to be a big shot millionaire and put your, I'll pay five million. You could be part of that. You could be part of the Masterworks family and you can invest in fine art. 
really a billionaire in today's world. <laughs> yeah. Billionaire. Billionaire. <laughs> yeah, so everyone that signs up can do a private call with a registered investment advisor at Masterworks. And really, we want to do that just to be able to tailor our investment recommendations to their investment goals, right, and what's suitable for them. And so we're really going to help investors, particularly when it's a new asset class for almost every investor that signs up with us. We really want to have that time, typically 30 minutes, 45 minutes, with each new client to help them understand what are their investment goals, what is their risk tolerance, what are their return targets, and we really use that, our whole advisory team, we have almost 45 people here at the firm who do that full time, who are helping those new investors understand the difference between an Albert Olin and a Keith Haring or a Jean-Michel Basquiat and what that brings to a different portfolio. And so that's really what the advisory team does. So basically, someone who's interested in investing can talk to a real person. Absolutely, yeah. And get educated on what might be the best investment for them. We're here at Masterworks. This is where it's happening, baby. These people are buying, they're selling, they're researching. They got the biggest data collection you could imagine on fine art. Thank you, Masterworks, for sponsoring this video. Thanks for having us and showing us your operation. Over a thousand people in our community have already signed up for Masterworks. And if you want to invest in fine art, click the link below. I did. What are you waiting for? We went to park the car. On the way back to the hotel, Carla found a place she wanted to stop. And let me tell you, nobody loves margaritas like Carlita. When you go through this door, it takes you to a freight elevator. And we ran into some freight. <laughs> you can't make this up, man. I think we might have to move back. Shut up. Oh, I'm moving this garbage. You stay there. You're safe. If I can get past her, but it wasn't getting past me. Now we lost the elevator. This is bullshit. I'm standing next to garbage, waiting to take her to a rooftop bar in New York City, in Times Square. Donald Trump, don't put up with yeah, this shit. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Okay, normally you're supposed to go somewhere nice. You don't have to worry about it. But no, we have to do it Ben Mala's way. Ben Mala's move. <laughs> she don't need a margarita. Oh my God. Oh shit. There we go, more garbage. Come on, Fifth Island, this is ridiculous. Catch it, catch it. Oh my God, we'll never get it. <laughs> well, we made it up there, we met some folks, we had some margaritas, we only had one, because thank God it was last call. We met a car fan. Good, one day I want to be like you. I'm no, you don't, you don't want to be fat. Subscribe and hit the like button. Adios, amigos.